Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Wherever you are around the world, welcome along. I'm your sort of host, Rich Hagen, saying hi from GP Las Vegas. I'm not going to be here for long because, according to the clock on the wall, it's magic time. the art director for four years. That, that's, that's the short answer. Um, they, they were coming out. I always wanted to work for since I wanted since I knew I wanted to do fantasy art. Um, so it was just about a matter of, of having the right portfolio that, that looked like magic that it was good enough. And uh, uh, when I first approached them, I wasn't ready. I wasn't at that stage yet. So it was just a matter of pers uh, persistence and just getting good enough to do it and, and showing it to the right people. Really. Um, well, most. Folks that I know have um, got their start doing conventions, and you would go to a convention and get uh, your portfolio reviewed. And I usually tell students that's a good thing to start in, uh, to try and get your name a little bit more popular with the art directors at conventions. Uh, I guess starting magic by being an illustrator for TSR, which is a post bought TSR. I was a staff illustrator there and I started doing magic shortly after. Well, um, back in 1992, uh, I was going to Cornish College of the Arts, which was um, located in Seattle, Washington. And uh, one of my uh, colleagues there, another student there named Jesper Mearforce, came to me and told me that there was a game that he was working on. He was the um, art director over at Wizards of the Coast, and that was a little tiny rinky-dink uh, place in the basement of Peter Atkinson's um, home, and mentioned that they were working on this really awesome new trading card game, and they were looking for artists, and he actually needed to outsource more work, so he was actually going to students at Cornish asking if they would be able to take on the work. At the time, I actually had recommended a friend of mine do it. Unfortunately, my friend did not show up to his portfolio review. And uh, Jesper mentioned this to me and asked me, why don't I try out? He told me how much money it was and apologized for it being not that much money. I said that was fine. I'm a student. It sounded great to me. I took four cards. and. Uh, I asked him what I was supposed to do. He just kind of threw out some ideas for each card. Um, they were very, very vague and rough. They only consisted of a color, like the mana color, uh, the name, what the card did, which of course made no sense to any of us, and kind of some ideas that we could use for that particular card, unless it was really specific. So I took four cards, did the artwork, Turned it in, got paid, was thrilled, got, ate a fancy dinner, and that was that. Um, and then the game came out. I thought it was just going to be something local. I didn't think much of it. We did our we did a, uh, our first signing not too long after it came out, and I was shocked at the amount of people who came. And the next thing you know, the game is huge, and we're doing more sets, and it was very overwhelming and um, amazing. And that's pretty much how I got started back in 92, 93. Uh, all of my stuff is uh, traditional oil, and I like to bring the originals along because anymore I've been noticing that uh, folks can't tell the difference between a print and a painting. And culturally, that's kind of a problem in our society, I think. But, uh, Mostly traditional oil. I've only done one digital painting for Magic, and that's doubling season. But um, they take a little bit longer, but I think it's worth it in the end. Uh, I do all my all my work is done in oil paint. It's all original oil on on Masonite. Um, I, I don't use any any digital or anything like that at all. Um, originally, the first pieces I did in uh, color pencil and ink because I didn't know how to paint. Or I, I did know how to paint a little bit, but not really to any major extent. Uh, soon after that, uh, I switched to uh, gouache, which is a, a water-based medium, and worked in gouache from that point on. And I still work in gouache, uh, gouache paint. Um, and later on, uh, in some of the later pieces that I did, like Elvis Spirit Guide, for instance, I started working in watercolor. And actually, Elvis Spirit Guide was the first watercolor, not watercolor, I'm sorry, 
Um, in the past, I used oils. Uh, now it's it's all digital. It's Photoshop and some pencil. They'll vary a bit. Um, something really simple like filter plans here, um, is because it's just a head. Will maybe only take about 20 hours. You know, once we start getting to something really complicated like like uh, like Cathedral Sanctifier or or, uh, or True Fire Paladin. You're, you're looking at more around maybe 60 hours of work because of all the, all the detail and all the perspective and everything that goes into that. So it varies quite a bit. Uh, the short answer is anywhere from a couple days to a couple weeks, uh, depending on the piece, how complex it is, and uh, how inspired I am, I guess. I'd like to give myself about a week uh, for each painting, from sketch to finish, and then. Um, but I have them quicker time, longer time. I like longer than a week, and I can actually get some decent detail in there. But freelancers, we have to work towards uh, towards budget, and we have to work towards uh, brand and time limitations. So whatever the project takes. <laughs> well, that's sort of a funny story. Um, I only played Magic once ever, and that was in '93 when I was first being taught how to play Magic. Um, yes, from Near Force was actually the person teaching me and um, he's a very competitive person and um, rather than just showing me how to play and getting me used to the game, he would show me things and then cream me and then show me a little bit more and then cream me and then show me more again and then cream me and after a while I got kind of sick of getting killed and threw down the cards and got up and walked away and never played again. <laughs> Uh, anymore, I'm kind of rubbish. It's it's kind of when I first got work in the war went back, I uh, started to play a little bit more. But I'm used to the game being very simple, almost like Pokemon simple. So where it's like and the memory and uh, being good with mathematics has failed me in my older age. So it's kind of. And time, I've not had a lot of time to play, so uh, I try to keep up with the dynamics of the cards I'm working on. And, like if if that can fit uh, some kind of things that I can throw into the cards and it makes it uh, any better visually, then I try to keep up on that. But uh, haven't paid, haven't played myself. Well. My short and easy answer is no, I don't. But I wouldn't mind learning. The problem is I just I don't have all that many friends and all that much time. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, um, I've I, I played other card games competitively, and I've played, I played enough Magic where I understand it. I, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm any good at it, though. <laughs> uh, I, I, I keep pretty busy, so I can't keep up on the meta and keep up with, with, with what's going on and what's that's popular and, what, you know, and everything, but uh, I do know how to play. Oh, good question. Uh, piece of thing, I, I love Unmasked from Mercadian Mass, uh, Night of Dust from 10th edition. Um, and there's also a little, you know, I love the Avatar cycle, that was just a fun one to paint. Um, fun and also kind of a nightmare in a, a dual sense. Um, some other artists I really enjoy. Uh, I, I, I kind of like looking back to, you know, like the pre Raphaelites and turn of the century illustration. And, um, some of the pulp work, you know, like Virgil Finley's like pen and ink work, stuff like that. You know, I always find that very inspiring. And there's just a lot of current modern people, and I wouldn't want to mention everybody because I, I will forget somebody. Yeah, my, my personal favorites are Cathedral Sanctifier and the Human Token from Avacyn Restored um, because of the emotion that I was able to get to get through in both of those, the storytelling and emotion, the serene quality. And the opposite of the side of the spectrum is Appetite for Brains because I just went all out. I said I wanted to grow someone out and I I, uh, I did that. I've been told that card makes toddlers cry and that was what I was trying to do. So, <laughs> so as far as uh, uh, our magic artists that inspired me, um, Donato Giancola has always been a huge inspiration to me. He's done over 100 magic cards. Um, I, uh, he's, the nicest guy in the world and he's always helped me out. Um, as far as current guys working, Chris Ron's a favorite of mine, love his work. Um, love Steve Argyle, love Darkin. Um, there's so many. Lucas Graciano, who actually works in Magic, was a teacher of mine, so I could go on. They're all, they're all great. Totally influenced by a lot of folks that I met just today. Uh, we had um, uh, Jeff Maricola, 
that I met for the first time. I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, let's see, magic influences uh, Mark Zug, huge. Um, some of the older ones. When I first, when the first, when the game first came out, I remember Richard King Ferguson was like a big one. Quentin Hoover, who recently passed, unfortunately, was a big influence. Um, Drew Tucker was another. Uh, nowadays, I'm, I'm kind of influenced by the newcomers coming into the game. Some of the digital work is just blows my socks off, so I try to. We, we playfully complete, compete with each other and uh, trying to uh, get the, the best kind of technique and skill set that you can develop. Um, yeah, it's pretty much influences. Outside of Magic, uh, John Gerard, Mobius is a big influence. Uh, all the pre raphaelites in terms of craft have been like a big influence. Originally coming from a printmaking tradition and book arts tradition, but um, in terms of uh, keeping my technique a little bit more traditional, they've been a big influence. Brandywine School, uh, Howard Pyle, and Golden Era illustrators are enormous influence for all of us. Frizzetta, you guys. Um, yeah, I could go on infinite. I travel to a lot of events, and um, this by far, I think, has been one of the busiest and craziest for me. Um, I came with all the intentions of, you know, getting all these missions done, and um, I have a lot of stuff yet to do after I get home. Yeah, I, that's the other thing I do. I do a lot of events. I'll do about a couple of magic tournaments a year and about seven or eight comic cons a year uh, as well. As well as fantasy, uh, uh, like uh, illustration, yeah, just as well. It's different in that, in that I, I draw a lot more of these. At other shows, I tend to just be doing selling prints or, or talking about my artwork that's already framed it on the wall. In this one, I'm signing stuff, I'm drawing, I'm drawing on mats, I'm drawing weird doing altars of weird stuff, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, and it's a lot of just, I have to wear a lot of different hats. And so I tell people, on, on, a, on a lot of events like this, I'm going to have to go back and forth between, you know, the introvert drawing and the extrovert talking, and introvert, extrovert, you know, it, it, can, be, it can be a little much sometimes. <laughs> Lately, the last two years, I've been teaching. I've been taking a break from that yeah. recently, but um, that's been filling up most of my time. It's uh, teaching at the PNCA, the Pacific Northwest College of Art in Portland, and um, I've been uh, pretty busy with that and just uh, work on ferals. Originally from Detroit, so I've done uh, about five or six there, and then. Once I moved to the Pacific Northwest, about the same amount, about seven or eight uh, different conventions. Well, this is exclusively the biggest uh, trading card game show ever. It's uh, capped out at 4,500 folks, so uh, Tim's done just a hell of a job in uh, a situation that's never been had before. So, uh, this is the biggest show that I've ever done for a GP. It's not like a convention uh, where you're going to have like um, higher numbers, but this is for, a, for a Grand Prix, this is the biggest number. Well, I don't do much traveling at all. Um, I'm not the greatest traveler in the world. So I, mean, I pretty much stick to the Seattle area where I still live. And um, I haven't done a whole lot of magic related stuff. Uh, particularly after 1997, I stopped doing that many uh, you know, signings and things like that. Um, and I wasn't doing any more magic art after that. Um, and then after, actually after 1999, I didn't do very much uh, illustration, period. Uh, for about seven or eight years before I started, uh, I actually went back to a regular job and started working in the tech industry. Uh, hated that, left and started doing illustration again, which I 
right now continue to do, uh, mostly fine art and illustration. Um, and I uh, have done a few things here and there uh, locally, but not a whole lot. I've done stuff through the mail. Um, and so I've never been invited to Grand Prix, probably because I haven't done anything in a million years. But uh, I actually wound up at this one because I was brought in to curate the Modern Masters uh, art show, art exhibit, uh, which has 87 pieces from the Modern Masters uh, set. And also I run Crab Jab Studio, which uh, we're represented here. Uh, we have a bunch of artwork that we sell and artists that we represent and shows that we run. Uh, so initially I wasn't even put on the list of artists because I was just doing all of that and then at the last minute Tim Shields decided to put me on the list and so here I am signing. And it's sort of fun to be at the largest Grand Prix or card tournament ever. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's, I don't know what to compare it to except that it's ginormous and pretty wacky and a lot of fun. So. Non Magic Art? Well, I work full time for uh, Big Fish. We are a casual game company in Seattle. Um, so that involves like a 3D. Um, the current position that I have, it involves, you know, the jack of all trades, master of none kind of thing, where um, uh, one week I'm working on UI, another one I'm working on like a, a, a character design, another one I'm working on um, like some sort of 3D scene. Uh, I do quite a few book covers. Uh, I just signed on to do an entire illustrated novel that's going to keep me busy for a year. I do a lot of private commissions, I do gallery work, I do personal work. I, uh, I like to have a lot of different irons and a lot of different fires. So. Uh, these days, um, I haven't done a whole lot in gaming. I did a couple other trading cards and magazines. Um, I started doing a lot of what they refer to as fairy art. Uh, started doing uh, fairy books, fairy calendars, fairy how-tos, fairy greeting cards, things like that. Um, got to be known as one of the fairy artists, which I really enjoy doing. Um, and uh, I do mostly fine art and mission work now. I, know, I don't necessarily turn my nose down on illustration, but since I still work in traditional media, um, I tend to work slower than person who work in digital media, uh, so I feel like I would be a liability to a lot of game industry, game, you know, games, uh, in, especially with the kind of deadlines that they have and a lot of the revisions that they do, so I'm always open to it, but I don't necessarily pursue it that hard. Um, and then these days I do a lot of curation and uh, art show facilitation. Studio in Seattle. So that's what I'm up to. Uh, favorite alterations. So I always like uh, altering morphlings and giving like the angel devil wing thing. That's always kind of fun. Um, one I did recently and I have a request to do that I have to take back with and work on is uh, the uh, Harbor Elves. Uh, altering that look like uh, Adventure Time characters. Yes. Um, learn Anatomy. Draw, and that doesn't mean draw on the computer. That means actually learn how to draw. Draw from life. Learn things like light and value, and draw and draw, and be very um, be very open to constructive criticism. When somebody, when you go to somebody for a portfolio review, don't worry whether or not you're good or bad. Really listen to what they tell you about your work because that information. Um, well, the business of Mad and Mad is the same thing. It, it's about, like as I mentioned earlier, it's about having a specific portfolio that's good enough, um, and that's a very tough thing to do. It's, it's a lot of work, um, and the, the way to approach it is 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 essentially that you're you're competing with us, and so you know if you want to work on magic, you have to take a job away from me or Steve Argo or, or any of the big shots here, and, and, and you've got to take you that. And, and that, that should give you pause because that's a hard thing to do. And we're you know we're gonna keep fighting. You know we'll, we'll be friendly. We'll help you out, but we're not gonna let you take our job that easily. We're gonna keep getting better and better as you keep getting better. So so approach it with that attitude of of, of not you know, take it very very seriously and work very very hard on it and be be aware of what your competition is. And beyond that, it's just it's just a matter of being good enough and showing it to the right people. Um, it's like any other job. So, so you can do it to the job and convince the right person that you can do it. And, and, 
that, that's the short answer. I, don't, I could write a book of advice on how to get into this industry. But. Um, always have a fallback. There are so many talented illustrators being flooded in the market on a daily basis that it's, it's really a kind of a tough thing to break into. Uh, the best thing you do is you can draw every single day and hone your skills and just to improve what you do. Well, there's two things. I tell students, uh, one thing is you can, you can get work if you do one of three things. It's either uh, you know, your speed, uh, meeting deadlines, it's like uh, positive thing. Work on your skill set to you know as, as good as you can possibly get, and just be a nice, just be a nice person. <laughs> and if you're easy enough to work with, that's like, if you can get two out of those three things, you're gonna get work. At Grand Prix Las Vegas, there were 12 magic artists attending the event. Now, all of the artists throughout the weekend had long lines, though during the day, the lines would shrink and grow larger, depending on the time of day. However, there was one exception. Steve Argyle always seemed to have a huge line from the very moment he showed up to the moment he left late at night. Now, one of the reasons for this is Steve Argyle is very popular for doing card alterations. However, card alterations take quite a while, which is why the average wait in his line would be three to four hours, if not longer. So realizing there was no chance for me to be able to sit down and interview Steve Argyle, instead I decided to talk to some of his dedicated fans waiting in line. Uh, we got Miracola, uh, we got uh, Max, uh, we got Darkin over here, we got Lucas up there, uh, we have Julie over here, and then we have Hayes right there. And uh, you trying to get everyone? Yeah, I'm trying to get everyone. All right. So where the where'd you come out from today? Well, it's my first it's my first GP. All right. From uh, I'm from Oklahoma, so we drove 18 hours to get here. So where do all you guys come from? Uh, we are from Iowa. I'm I'm from California, Central Valley. Is that guy there is from California? California. You all took place. You all took part in the GP so far, right? Uh, no, I'm only here for the artists. Oh, who, I went to GP. Okay, who who actually opened packs? In? Well, I had judges okay. open mine. Tell me uh, any good cards you opened, or what cards you opened. <laughs> okay. Royal well, Darkbound Rabbit. Uh, honestly, it wasn't my my opening experience. It was everybody around me. Uh, we I opened up Judge like the sleeping special ones. Uh, like they were all pre-registered and everything. I had one buy and everybody, literally everybody, guy left, guy right, diagonal and right in front of me, all had planeswalkers and swords and like Valkyries and things. I had, I have one uh, Maloku and that's like my bomb, that's it. Like guy across me had both planeswalkers and a sword. <laughs> I ended up, I ended up opening up for you say. Luckily it was splashable because I had to go blue-white. It did pretty well, 4-0, and then decided to go after that. I opened the perfect fairy deck, like Cryptic Command, Una, Shackles, but I lost the top decks. So, where, so you came out just for just the artists? Just for the artists. Uh, so how many uh, artists have you gotten signed over the years? I've been through 11 of the 12 so far. So Pete is supposed to be here tomorrow, so I'll get the 12th one tomorrow. Who's the, who's the 12? Pete Ventures. Oh, oh yeah, he wasn't here Yeah, he's was. sick, so he'll be back tomorrow. But yeah, I got the rest of them. Signed and cards altered and sketches. And, and, uh, I bought uh, a couple large prints from Argyle, so now I just got to get them home. So, we'll see how that goes. So what are you guys going to ask uh, Steve to do for you? Uh, I'm getting a hand-drawn commander deck, and he's the 100 card I'm going to finish it with. Oh, uh, I'm going to get, uh, I have Miracolas with the mi Wizards Mentor right here, uh, pointing. And I'm going to have Argyle do something kind of cool right there that Miracolas pointing at. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to get a Liliana altar to be a sister of battle from Warhammer 40k. What are you doing? Uh, I'm actually, uh, me and my friend are huge fans of the original artwork of Liliana, and so we're getting it altered uh, to kind of be the sexy Liliana, and then uh, another one of whatever he wants to do, so it's going to be a, his own exploration. <laughs> How about you guys? Um, I'm getting my Liliana with a unicorn on it. 
This is my team. This is a unicorn. I actually had all mine already done. All right. I'm just hanging out with him. Buddy of mine. So how long have you guys been waiting in line so far? Two hours. And we moved About an hour. Yeah, yeah we moved we two chairs in the last hour and a half. About an hour and, About an hour and a half here. So. That's dedication. Yeah. And uh, have you guys gotten around Vegas at all yet, or have you just been here the whole time? This is my fifth trip to Vegas, so I've, I've already seen a lot. What, what should people do here in Vegas when they come to Grand Prix and stuff? What was that? Uh, what what should people go? Where should they eat? What should they see? What you recommend? Heart Attack Grill. Say that again? Heart Attack Grill. I went there the other day. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's really good. I, I recommend the uh, buffet at the Inn Hotel. Like, we got recommended that. And it was all you can eat booze or drink booze and, and all you can eat amazing food. So it was, and their, their pastry chef has award winning stuff. So. Thanks for tuning in for part three of my coverage of Grand Prix Las Vegas. Make sure you tune in next time for my fourth and final episode covering the event. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll have a lot more magic-related content coming in the future. So until next time, I'll see you on Magic Time.